Are you all right with companies tracking your activities on the internet in detail? Probably not, right? However, chances are high that you have explicitly given your consent for just that and you were probably tricked and manipulated into doing that with the help of dark patterns. And today we will find out what those are. Welcome to the Soft Skill Channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today I'd like to talk to you about dark patterns. So what are dark patterns? The term was coined by one Harry Bricknell who runs the website Deceptive Design, formerly darkpattern.org. Now, dark patterns are small tricks in the user interface that make it more likely that we will select the option that is beneficial to the company instead of the option that is beneficial to ourselves. Why are they used? In a lot of countries there are strict regulations concerning data and privacy. For example, in Europe we have the General Data Protection Regulation where you cannot just collect users' data, but you have to get their consent, you have to get their permission. And if you just ask people, hey, can I use your data for whatever I please, they will probably say no. So you have to use some tricks and those are dark patterns that are widely used, uh, widespread on the internet. Now, one common example that probably all of you know and probably all of you encounter in your day-to-day -day lives are the messages about cookies that appear on plenty of websites. Now, if you ask internet users in surveys, are you okay with companies tracking your online activities? The answer is usually no. However, in day-to-day -day life, I frequently observe people clicking the big green accept all button and by that giving their consent, giving their permission for just that, the tracking of their internet activities. So why do they do it? This is because the companies employ plenty of tricks, plenty of dark patterns. First of all, on some websites, this cookie message, cookie pop-up will block the use of the actual website. Not always, there are plenty that have a small banner at the bottom or at the top, but some websites have a cookie message that will prevent you from using the website uh, until you've answered it. And that is a common trick because if you have to use, uh, if you have to ask users about data protection and privacy issues, the best time is probably when they don't want to be bothered, when it's unlikely that they will really take the time to read stuff and to make a conscious decision. So if you display this message when the user actually wants to use the website, see the website, uh, the chance is high that they will just click something to make this pop-up go away. And what will they click? Here the next trick comes into play. Uh, as you probably have observed, all those cookie messages always have a button uh, like accept all and this button always is in your face, quite eye-catching. It is usually green and big and obvious, while the button uh, or while any other buttons uh, to decline the cookies or whatnot, they are usually gray and laid back. They often have the background color. They are hidden in plain sight. Now, the impression these messages try to convey is that accepting all, accepting all is the default option. You can't go wrong with that. If you don't want to think about it, click that one. You can't go wrong with the default setting. Probably all people click that. It can't be so bad. And this is a dark pattern called deceptive snugness. It can't be so bad if it's the default setting, but yeah, actually you are giving away your personal data. 
Now, finally, some users might be aware about the importance of protecting their personal data and they might not want to turn on cookies. They might look for the option to decline. Now, the final trick is to make it as difficult for those as possible. So very often you don't just have a decline button next to the accept all button, but you have a button to bring up some kind of settings menu. And often this menu is quite crowded and big and contains lots of settings, lots of information, and you have to search for a little bit, scroll down and whatnot to finally find the button that lets you decline the cookies. So while you can accept all the cookies with just a single click, you have to spend some time and effort and perform several clicks to decline the cookies. And all of that is designed to make people more unlikely to choose the option they want, decline cookies, protect their privacy, and instead choose the option the company wants, accept all cookies. There is a dark pattern I especially like because of the great name and that is the Roach Motel. This is actually a brand name from a producer of Roach Traps um, because they are designed in a way um, that um, roaches are lured in by some smell and once they are inside they get stuck and they can't get out again. And this exactly is why this uh, name is used as a metaphor. It is very easy to get in, but quite difficult to get out. And this is true for a lot of subscription services, especially those, those free trial subscriptions. And a very prominent example for a roach motel was the procedure to cancel your Amazon account. I say was because the procedure has changed by now. Uh, nowadays it is a way easier, I will describe that later. But in the past it was quite cumbersome and difficult to close down an Amazon account. Now what you would do obviously is to log into Amazon and the obvious menu to check out was the your account menu. Now, if you select the Your Account menu, there are plenty of options to choose from. I did a quick count. There are more than 50 options, more than 50 things you can click at. So you would probably think the challenge is to figure out which of those 50 options is the one you need to select in order to close your account. But you're wrong. Uh, the truth is none of those options will allow you to close your account. This is a dark pattern called a dead end. The user selects wherever they expect to find a certain option, but they won't find it. There is no link that takes them to the right place. They are just stuck in a dead end. So what did you actually need to do to delete your account? Well, you had to scroll all the way down, select help and in the help section. Now, at first you have all this knowledge base, frequently asked questions stuff, but that's not what you need. You needed to select um, the, the contact Amazon option and then you needed to click through a few menus and make selections that didn't have any obvious connection to closing down your account until finally you were able to file a support request about closing your account. A support request. So you had to talk to an Amazon employee either by phone or via chat uh, who tried to convince you to better not close your account. But after you went through all of that, you were finally able to close your account. So you realize it is quite long and bothersome. Uh, on the Deceptive Design website, there is a short video that dis uh, displays the entire process. Uh, it's quite fun. The link is in the video description. Uh, as I said, nowadays, 
uh, this problem has been fixed. The European Commission and national um, consumer protection, consumer rights organizations complained to Amazon about uh, the old cumbersome process and uh, Amazon um, gave gave in. As far as I understand, there was no, no legal battle, no lawsuit or anything. Uh, they gave in and they changed the way to close your account. So nowadays, if you want to close your account, you just select your account, which is the obvious first choice. And among all the options presented there, there will be an option to close your Amazon account. So this one was fixed, but of course there are plenty more Roach motels on the internet. One area where dark patterns are especially widespread and especially frequently used is obviously social media, social networks, because they have an especially high interest in collecting your data. Their whole business model is based on collecting and using your data for personalized advertising. So here dark patterns are especially widespread. <clears throat> Um, there is an interesting study by the Norwegian Consumer Council from 2018 where they uh, checked examples for privacy-related messages from Facebook, Google and Windows 10 and they checked those messages that were displayed when the European General Data Protection Regulations came into effect. Now, obviously, that required some changes, so some message had to be displayed, and they had a look at those. And as an example, I'd like to show you a message, a part of the messages that were displayed by Facebook at the time. This image is from the study, Deceived by Design, by the Norwegian Consumer Council, page 23, and the dialogue boxes displayed, obviously, belong to Facebook, belong to the company Meta. Now, as I said, this is a part of the messages displayed when the general data protection regulations came into effect and it concerns a feature for face recognition. Uh, now, as you can see, there is a lot of text. So there is a small wall of text to read, uh, too long, didn't read kind of stuff. Um, and again, this is obviously presented at a time where you are not likely to bother because you want to log into Facebook, you want to check your messages and whatnot, want to check your account and you have to go through all of that and you just want to get rid of it quickly. Now, this begs the question, is it possible to postpone the whole business? It actually was, but the option was quite difficult to find. You had to click the small X in the corner and then there was a misleading message saying, yeah, you can't use Facebook unless you review the stuff. Uh, but, uh, so it sounded like you, you had to do it right now, but it was possible to continue and to actually postpone reviewing the data and privacy stuff until later. Yeah, so most people probably... Uh, dealt with it right away and once again the obvious approach is to just click the big and most noticeable button accept and continue now this big uh, box of text isn't especially helpful if you look at it more closely they, ch they choose two examples for the use of the face recognition technology. The first is they say it will help them recognize, recognize if someone is impersonating me. And second, they say it's a great help for the visually impaired because uh, Facebook can tell them who is on a photo or in a video. Now, obviously, those are two well-chosen examples and Facebook doesn't really inform us of the full extent of that feature. They don't inform us what else it is used for apart from those very positive examples. And I, for my part, I couldn't tell from this message what exactly the technology does. Does it check my photos and videos, the materials I upload, or does it mean that it will check for my face on all kinds of materials? So the message is rather vague and not very helpful. Yeah, and of course, the accept and continue button is quite obvious. 
Uh, this is again deceptive snugness. This is presented as the default option and the button we actually want, uh, the one that lets us manage our settings again is uh, in the background color and is pretty much hidden in plain sight. And once again, it is not a simple decline button, but I have to bring up some settings. So again, it takes longer than necessary to choose the privacy friendly option. Now, if I open this settings menu, there is an interesting info screen where a dark pattern called confer shaming is employed. It means that I'm, they, they try to make me feel bad about my choice, make me feel bad about choosing the privacy friendly option. Uh, for example, have a look at the icons. The version where I um, turn on and accept the face recognition technology is represented by a lit light bulb and the one where I decline to use it is represented by a dim light bulb. So it's made to look like the, the lesser, the worse choice. Why are you choosing the bad choice? Are you stupid? And they bring up the two examples from before again, yeah, uh, recognizing impersonation and helping the visually impaired. And again, it's the same, the same approach. Don't you want the extra security against impersonation? Don't you want to help the visually impaired? What a bad person are you? Now, if I nonetheless continue, I finally reach the menu where I can make the actual choice, where I can set the option to have face recognition turn off. And after a total of four clicks and three menus, I can be done with it. Um, while people who just accept uh, whatever Facebook wants just have to perform a single click. Now, obviously, there are plenty of more examples for dark patterns on the internet. Um, one that is quite widespread is artificial scarcity. We encounter that one, for example, if we want to uh, travel and we want to book, for example, a hotel room and the booking website displays messages like, oh, there are only three more of those rooms available and 56 people booked one in the last 20 seconds. You better be quick. This artificial scarcity, of course, is a trick by the booking website to put pressure onto us to book right away, buy right away, instead of waiting and checking other options. Uh, one dark pattern I find especially bothersome, one practice I uh, especially dislike is ads that are disguised as content. For example, let's say you've read an interesting article and they have some recommendations for other articles you might like uh, displayed with a thumbnail and title. And among those are a few that have a very small and very faint light, <coughs> light gray hint at or advertising above or below. So those are just ads, but they are presented as being proper articles, hoping you would click on them by accident. <clears throat> Sorry. Finally, one little trick I've encountered frequently, but that I rarely see mentioned in articles about dark patterns is when they try to trick you into subscribing to a newsletter by placing uh, the checkbox next to mandatory checkboxes. Um, this I've seen frequently on online shops uh, during the checkout process. So you've just, um, you've entered your address and you've chosen the payment method and whatnot, and you are on the final page where you can finally be done with it and uh, confirm the order, place the order. However, before you can click the button to place your order, you have to check some boxes. There is a box, a box I agree to the uh, terms of, of business, whatever, uh, of the shop. And obviously this is mandatory, you have to click that. And then there is a box, I agree to the data and privacy um, um, policy, whatnot. And again, this is mandatory, you have to click it. 
And below that, frequently you have a third box I want to subscribe to the newsletter, which is not mandatory, but obviously the idea is that people just notice, oh, well, there are mandatory boxes, I have to check them all, right? I check all of them so I can finally be done with it and place my order. And again, it's not a very nice trick. If you would like to get some more information about dark patterns, there are a few sources I can especially recommend. You will find them in the video description. First of all, there is a document by the European Data Protection Board published in 2022 called Guidelines on Dark Patterns in Social Media Platforms and Interfaces, where they describe a variety of dark patterns and they describe everyday use cases, such as um, subscribing to a social network and they describe uh, if I want to subscribe to a social network which dark patterns am I likely to encounter there. Then there is the aforementioned study deceived by the design by the Norwegian Consumer Council uh, for Brokerade. I'm not sure how to properly pronounce that, didn't find any example for that. Uh, published in 2018, as I mentioned before, they examine the messages displayed that were displayed when the general data protection regulations um, came into effect in Europe for Facebook, Google and Windows 10. And finally, there is a book I can recommend, Nudge by Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein. It doesn't specifically deal with dark patterns, but it deals with, let's say, a positive version of that called nudges. Now, Thaler and Sunstein say every decision we make takes place in certain circumstances. Those circumstances have to be managed. There needs to be some choice architecture and uh, this, this will always be there. And if it always needs to be there, we should use it to help people make better choices. We should nudge them towards the choice that they would make themselves if they had all the information, if they had time to think about it, if they were not influenced by biases and fallacies and so on. Um, for example, let's say you run a canteen, you obviously have to place all of the foods in some way. So you have to perform choice architecture. Now you can use this uh, by, for example, placing the salad right at the entrance, right in your face and by uh, placing the uh, unhealthy food like desserts and fatty foods in a not as obvious place because this will, in the end, um, make your visitors, on average, eat a bit more healthy. So there will be a slight manipulation that is in their own interest. And this is what Tyler and Sunstein call nudges. So very interesting book. I also have a book review about it on the channel. By the way, the like and subscribe button on YouTube don't employ plenty of dark patterns. They go easy on dark patterns there. But nonetheless, I would be quite happy if you use them nonetheless. We will see each other again in the next video for today. I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.